the next speaker uh, on the stage, um, he's actually a very interesting person. He produces house music and his vinyl was a uh, hit actually, the eighth place in the deep house music in the world. Yes, yes, I didn't believe that, but he actu it's actually true. And another interesting thing for him is that he's a construction site, he was a construction site supervisor, but at the age of 24 plus 10, can we say that, 24 plus 10, he decided to reconsider his profession and what easier than becoming a WordPress developer, why not? <laughs> so today he will talk about, I hope I don't mess up this one, but he will tell us a little bit more about the positive culture that can support agile software development framework. So let's welcome and applause Alexander Savkovic. Hi everyone, do you hear me? Yeah, awesome. Uh, first things first, why I decided to talk about the culture inside the Agile mind and not about Agile exactly. First of all, uh, very often you, you, I heard that people say, we tried Agile, we tried Scrum, we tried Kanban, but it's not working for us. Well, it's not possible. Uh, why it's not working? Imagine that you are going to a gym one day and you spend one hour at the gym and you finish with your training and you come home and stand in front of the mirror and say there is no results and then you go tomorrow again for one hour and you come home back home and again you stand in front of the mirror you take your phone to take a selfie for Instagram but still you look the same but if you are doing that consistently for some period of time I don't know for how long but for some period of time, you will see changes. And that is the point with Agile. You will not see the changes instantly. First week, first month. I don't know when, maybe in four months, six months, a year. But you will see changes. And in Agile, is very, a huge problem is how to measure what changes. Because it doesn't change in a day. It's not like how many blog, uh, blog post views you have today and you did something about marketing tomorrow and then two days later you have more visits. So it's easy to measure and in Agile it's not so easy. It's something that needs to be done consistently. Oh. No. This, this one is not working. But, but, but. Is it? Awesome. Okay. Uh, because one of the girls from <coughs> Bulgarian community uh, gave me a lesson about that I shouldn't use words like bullshit, crap, asshole, and that kind of stuff on WordPress uh, WordCamp conferences because that is breaching co code of conduct. That is why we have disclaimer today. So I will use bullshit only when it is, crap when there is no better description, and asshole only one time. So you know that I will use, so I already did my part of the job, breaching code of conduct, so we can move on. <laughs> I will share zero statistics in this presentation. Why? Because 84% of statistics in presentations are fictional. <laughs> we made them up. And, imagine what? This is completely random number because I really don't know what is the real percentage of fake statistics in presentations. So, my number is fake as well. We need to humanize IT industry. We are like robots, more or less. We are doing things in some robotic way. We are like, go to work, prepare coffee, then we have a meeting, then after meeting we will do something. And then we are coding, then we go home, then we play games. Then we watch movie, so everything is robotized. And how to uh, humanize IT industry? Of course, by making it more robotized. Easy as that. Uh, why we need frameworks and procedures? Because we lie. We lie and we lie a lot. And we lie every day, every morning, every minute, every hour. Why? 
We lie to make the world feel better. We are not lying just to protect ourselves. Sometimes, and very often, we lie to protect someone else. How? Imagine that you're a team lead, you're a front-end developer, and you have a team lead, and your team lead asks you, can you finish this before Friday? And you say, yeah, sure, sure we can. But you know that it's not going to be done before Monday or Tuesday. But you will make him feel better that day when he asks. But, and you lie. The fact is that you lie. That is why we need to use frameworks like Kanban or Scrum, so no one will get into a position to ask you if something will be done or not. And not get yourself into a position to lie, because there is no structure how you're doing that, how you're tracking what is going to be done today or tomorrow. <laughs> and we are coming to that part about the couch, about the content couch. If you ask top management, the first thing, the biggest bullshit that you will ever hear, this is the first one, sorry, that you will ever hear from the top management is if you ask them, and I did a research about this. There are many people in the WordPress community who can confirm that I asked from top management to employees what is their company's culture and they didn't know why I'm asking, and people know me, and so they replied, and they were honest. So top management said, care for employees. Middle management said the same, like copy-paste. Why to say something else, why to be more inspiring? But when I asked employees, the story was a bit different. First one said, that he feels alone and under pressure very often. The second one said that more transparency wasn't hard. More or less, he didn't know what is happening in the company, what is the revenue, how much, they, how much money they earn, and that kind of stuff. And he really wanted to know more about his company. And the last one said that they have nice team buildings like going to cinema or playing some sport. That is not about the culture. So no one knew what is the company's culture? And we talk so much about, about that, that culture. Your employees, if you're CEOs or in kind of middle management or something like that, are feeling that pressure and they're feeling bad because uh, you lack procedures. You need procedures, any kind of procedures like Kanban, Scrum, any of those frameworks will work because they will know what are they doing and when, where they are going. Kanban as a framework, if you ever thought, should we use Kanban or we should use Scrum? There are two, uh, let's say, the major players in IT industry, in agile frameworks are Kanban and Scrum. Kanban is good for, uh, let's say, visu visualization. If you're doing some tasks like hiring, let's say, your HR, so you have repetitive tasks, like, publish an ad uh, on LinkedIn that we are hiring, uh, collect CVs, check CVs, call uh, uh, candidates for an interview, uh, after interview do evaluation. So uh, every week they have repetitive tasks and they can use Kanban to visualize what are they doing because they're doing always the same thing and they got lost. They don't have that feeling that they did something. If they have visualization and they see some cards moving from uh, one column, a row, like uh, to do, to uh, doing, and then to done, they can see that they're, they're doing something and they feel more important. This is how it should look, actually. You have to do, schedule interview 48, and you see that you're doing something. You're moving cards from one, row, uh, from one column to another. And when you're moving them, you can see what is happening that week and how much you did. And in the middle of the week, you can see if you finish the half of your task. So it's easier to track, and uh, it, that visualization is helping you to see are you uh, slower than you should be or you're faster than you should. For 
management, there is a good thing called daily huddle. We have in our company daily huddle meetings for middle and top management. And what is the point of daily huddle? You gather and you're standing. You're not sitting, you're standing. What you need to say, each member, each manager. And it lasts like five minutes. You just say what you did yesterday, what you're going to do today, if someone is blocking you, who is blocking you, and one number. The number is really important. What is the number? Uh, if you're, let's say, marketing a manager or director or whatever in your company, your goal is to have 12,000 visits per day on your website. You're at the moment around on 10,000, but your goal for, the, for this year is 12,000. Every day on the meeting, you will say the number from yesterday. So 10,576, 10,565. And you will see if you're making some progress towards your goal or you have some problems. You're losing visitors. But why this is important? Imagine that happened that one day you have, uh, let's say, average of 10,500 or 600, and one day you see that you have 8,000 visits. You would be panicking. What you did wrong to have 2,000 visits less today, yesterday, than two days before, and you did everything in the same way. In these kind of meetings, probably some guy from uh, infrastructure, some engineer, will say, yeah, we have uh, problems with our infra infrastructure yesterday, and that affected number of visits because our service was slower. So the guy from marketing will know, or the girl, whoever, will know what was the problem, why she had so, uh, less visits yesterday, and that will reduce her stress. Scrum is more for product and development teams. It's something where you need to estimate tasks and you need to have a finished part of the product at the end of each sprint. And sprint is one part of uh, Scrum as a framework. While I will not be speaking about Scrum in details, uh, there is one simple explanation about that. Why I will focus on culture and positive feedback that can support that culture, uh, then to talk about frameworks. You have on scrum.org, you have Scrum Guide, it's 21 pages. Download 21 pages of Scrum Guide and read it, uh, because in the, uh, that way I will not waste my and your time by speaking about something that is available online. The more valuable knowledge that I can transfer is the knowledge about the positive feedback culture and how the positive feel feedback culture can affect uh, positively your company. This is how Scrum looks, uh, sprint, uh, Scrum looks like comparing to Kanban that is way more simpler than, uh, than, uh, than Scrum. Okay, when we are talking about the culture, we have one problematic child there, and that problematic child is your CEO. Why? There are many reasons for that. First of all, the bottleneck is always on the top. The bottleneck is not on the bottom of the bottle. It's always on the top. And why the CEO is a bottleneck and he should be a person that should motivate and inspire the entire company to work more and to work better? There is a reason. CEO knows the best. If not best, he knows at least better than, uh, than anybody else. You need to listen to CEO and CEO is a role model. Why? He created the company. He is the one who created the product. He is the one with the idea. He is the visionary. So we should all look at the CEO and follow his the trail. <coughs> it's not like that. It shouldn't be like that. But there is a simple explanation in IT industry. Why is that so? Because from the very beginning, if you look at any IT company, CEO was probably developed and he started some product because he developed that product or at least he gathered a team of people to help him develop something that he can do alone but always from the start he is kind of it's very rare occasion that 
someone from the business, from economy or something like that, started IT company. The situation is that someone from economy, from business, will buy some IT company, not to start. They are starting like startups, always. So, from the beginning, developer, uh, CEO is everything. He's developer, product manager, CEO, recruiter, promoter, everything. He can do everything and he needs to do everything because he doesn't have a big team. And this is working up to five employees. This is the breaking point. When, when the company reaches the number of five people, CEO can't be everything. He can be developer and he can be product manager. But he needs to move out from these things. CEO shouldn't be HR. HR should be HR. Someone who knows how to do it. Someone who is empathic. Someone who is different. And we know that in IT industry we are not so empathic, especially if we are developers. And this is working up to 15 people, people 15 employees. When you go over 15, he can be only product manager, and that's it. He can't be anything else. That is the only thing that he can have a time for. And this works up to 50. When you reach the number of 50, CEO is nothing. He needs to be nothing. He only has one thing that he needs to do. He needs to keep all of you in line and you need to know what is the goal number one. I will use you, Mila, for to volunteer. Come, come here. Thank you. There, there. Going to straight line to Bob. Go, 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 go. So, what she did? You can see. What she did now? No. She knew what is the goal. The goal is to reach Wapu. But I was blocking her because CEOs are blocking many tasks. And that is how I blocked her. She came to me and she said, uh, uh, can, I, can I go around you? And I said, yes. And she went around me to her goal. CEO needs to move because she can reach the goal. Otherwise, she needs to ask me or to obey my instructions because I said going to straight line. Don't go around something, go straight. And she didn't do it. So she needed to ask me. That is why CEO needs to step up. Not to be, not to be someone who is important in any procedure except keeping people in line with the goal number one. Goal number one is not growth. Say, so what's your goal? Go growth. Yeah, of course it's growth. You will not close the company. You, you would like to have your company, to see your company bigger. Of course it's growth. But what is the goal? We had a simple goal in Manage WP. It was to send a rocket to the moon and to put RC toys inside and to create application to drive those RC toys on the moon. And that should cost us around $500 million. And that was our goal. And we knew that we need to collect $500 million to send a rocket to the moon with our toys inside. And that was our goal. Not to earn more money for something, but to, to send a rocket. That is the goal, number one. Not uh, to have 50% higher uh, revenue next year. That's not a goal. The culture. The culture inside this is first is the positive fit. The culture, second thing that you need to have to support all of this is strictly and clearly defined positions. And the third thing is transparency across the whole company. So everyone needs to know what is happening. Everyone needs to know how much money you have at the moment. Everyone needs to know everything in your company. Find a way how to do it. Positive feedback culture is really important. So what is positive? Positive is something that makes you feel good. And negative is something that makes you feel bad. So it's not a negative feedback when something needs to be changed or fixed. But if it's good for how you said it. 
So feedback needs to have three components. That is something that you all need to learn. All uh, feedback needs to have three components, and uh, those components are content. What is the content? Content needs to have two things. First one is confirmation. So what is the confirmation? Confirmation is that if I need to give a feedback for how this swap is designed, confirmation is uh, I like the size, I like the color of his dress, but I would change his crown. So I confirmed what is good and said what can be changed. Completely different feeling for the one who designed this would be if I said, yeah, I, this crown is really crappy, the rest is just fine. It's completely different tone. And I said the same thing. I said completely the same thing. What I like and what I don't like. But in other tone and in another way. So find a way to, to do it like this. Confirm what is good, even though everyone knows what, what is good. Confirm it, because people will feel better. And then adjust what, need, what needs to be adjusted. Second thing is attitude. You need to go from undermining to supporting. Every time, every day, give positive feedbacks to people. Even if they know that they did something good, and everyone knows that they, they did something good, and you know that he did something good, give him a round of uh, praise about what he did. Tell him, oh, great job for, for this yesterday. You did a great job. Everyone knows, but uh, tell him. He will feel better. He will be more productive by doing that. And the form. Very important thing about the form is clarity. You need to be clear in the communication. First of all, communication styles differ. If you talk with someone from the UK and with someone from the US and with someone from Australia, the same phrase in three different native English speaking countries will have a completely different meaning. The guy, the someone from UK would, will tell you, will maybe laugh, but someone from the US would probably slap you for that. And maybe in Australia, probably hit you with his fist. So take care that the communication styles differ. Second things are the language barriers. Also very similar to this, but if you're not native English speaker, as most of us are not, uh, we have the problems to understand some things, especially if it's a call, online call or Zoom meeting or something like that. Very often you will, you will miss some things because you're, native, you're not native English speaker. Uh, cultural differences, again, the same problem. It's not the same way how I accept something, since I'm from Balkans, and how someone from Russia accepts something, and how someone from India accepts something. And we are talking about the same thing. We will accept the same thing in, a completely, in completely three different ways. Assume misunderstandings. Don't get mad instantly. Assume that you may be misunderstood what someone told you. So always go with the assumption that someone didn't want to insult you. Maybe you just misunderstood. Basic rules. Be timely. Two times. First time, when you see that something is broken, when you see that something needs to be fixed, fixed go there and say, can I ask you something? Do you want my feedback? I see that something is not uh, happening good. You should check this. I think that this should be fixed. Because people don't like to work, don't like to do something twice. So if you see that something, some downside of something, help them to see that immediately and to fix that immediately. And the second, non kill win moment. This is the asshole. One that I said that I mentioned once, an asshole. What is, what is a win moment? Imagine that I'm presenting you my WAPO that I designed. And I'm so proud because I worked on this WAPO for months. <laughs> he died. Uh, I designed this uh, WAPO for months. I tried to, to build it. I changed colors. I did so many things about this WAPO. And this is my win moment. I'm showing to the world my WAPO. And there is some asshole in the audience who said, uh, you have a typo there. 
Don't be an asshole. Let people enjoy the moment. Let your colleagues enjoy the moment. If something is wrong and you see this is wrong, like, oh, uh, that image is two pixels, should be, should be moved two pixels on the left because you're a pixel perfect guy. But let him enjoy the win moment because he's presenting the product. Tell him tomorrow. It can wait until tomorrow. So don't be an asshole. This is, I said three times, I said once. So I lied. I review you for this. This is also important. They say, your WAP is ugly. It kind of hurts. This WAP is ugly. I don't care. Really. <laughs> because when you review you for this, people will feel better. It's not his code or hers code. She didn't give a birth to the code. She only wrote it. It's a code. If it is you, if it is about some, someone, assume that he's having a hard time dealing with that. And assume that he already knows. And that you're kicking his balls by repeating the same thing that he already knows. Point and shift. My name is Alexander. If you say, Alexander, you're ugly. I know. <laughs> but what to do with that? <laughs> what to do with your, your ugly? But if you say, Alexander, I don't like the way you look. I don't like your hair, and I don't like your nose, and I don't like your ears. But there is a good hairdresser in the Sofia Mall, and there is Bell Medic Clinic for aesthetic surgeries, and it's a cheap one. Yep. It's a cheap clinic, and you can do surgeries, and you will look better. So point and shift. Tell me what is wrong and give me a solution for that. If you can't give me a solution, you're just uh, piling up the crap. So we don't need you to pile up the crap. The most important thing is ask. Ask if they want to hear your feedback. Maybe they don't want to hear your feedback. Maybe they already know you're just wasting their time. So always ask. If they, if they never asked for your feedback and you want to give feedback, don't go there and say, oh, I saw this, this is crap. No one asked you. Who asked you? Someone asked you for your feedback? No. Then keep your mouth shut. If you don't want to keep your mouth shut, ask if you want, if you can give your feedback. Strictly designed, uh, defined positions, this is pretty much easy. We'll skip a bit questions and answers. Uh, strict responsibilities, clear accountability, and remove CO from production. I explained why. Transparency keeps everyone on the track, builds the trust, sense of belonging, and reduces and removes imposter syndrome. How many of you know what, what is imposter syndrome? Not enough, definitely. Very often we don't know. I know that we don't know. But it's a culture kill. Read this together in, in yourself. You don't need to do it a lot. How many times you felt like that? Too many times, probably. Yeah. And you didn't even know that you have imposter syndrome. That, that is, that is some, something scientifically proved. And it's in psychology. It's not something that I invented right now. <coughs> what is the culture? This is something that I will read. Well, the sum of attitudes, customs, beliefs that distinguish one group of people from another. In IT world, we have copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste culture. Because when I start my startup, my company, I will copy-paste the culture of some of SiteGround, because they have a nice page about their culture. And SiteGround copy-pasted their culture from someone else when they started 15 years ago. And then before SiteGround, that company copy-pasted uh, their text about uh, culture and more or less it's Someone has bullshit detector here? No, no one wrote. This is this is bullshit. Okay, I'm Alexander. If you have something to ask, ask now because tonight you can't ask me because I will have some beers and I will have more beers and I will probably have more beers and more beers. Any questions?
Komm, Geist, so Bescheid. Any questions? I have one. Should. Since you mentioned a lot about what's the role of the CEO of the company, what's the best way for the CEO to keep all the people like on the right path, on the right track? Hmm. Uh, well, the point is that they need to know where, where, where they are going. That is the first and the most important thing to know where they are going, because uh, it would be completely different if I told you, uh, go anywhere in this room, you will be confused, you, you will be like, where to go? I, say, I don't care where you will go, go wherever you want. And where you will go? You know that uh, there is a fact in psychology with the donkey. You know the effect with the donkey. When you put the donkey in the middle and you put the uh, pile of hay on one side and the same pile of hay on the other side, he will die hungry because he will not know where to go from which pile of hay to eat. So if you're doing that with your employees, it's a huge problem. And the second thing that CEO needs to do, uh, very often you will hear people and the company say, our customers are our number one concern. So it means that your employees are at least second. No, your employees need to be one, uh, number one concern. And you need to care about your employees. And when you're employing someone, uh, you need to act like you're adopting a child. Because when you're adopting a child, you, you don't go there and say, uh, give me the, uh, some blonde one and uh, some that will be 193 centimeters higher when he's uh, 25, and I want that, uh, that he has uh, green eyes. No. You just get a kid. You adopt a kid the same way you need to adopt employees. And you need to love your employee and you need to, to trust. You, you need to give him trust. I think that that is the best way for, for CEO to work. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, guys, I bet some of you are still sleepy and some may be too shy, but Alex will be around, so if you have questions for him, just find him. I'm sure he will be more than happy to help any one of you.